Hallelujah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. God bless you. God bless you this afternoon for tuning in. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome you all in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you for joining me. Please, as you're joining, can you please click the share button, please, to invite your friends. It's time to fellowship together again in, in the presence of the Lord. One else like you. No one else like God. God is ever true. He's ever holy. He's ever worthy. Hallelujah. Let's be in the mood of worship, please. Let's worship Him. Let's worship Him. Let's worship God. God bless you. God bless you for joining. Good afternoon, everybody. May God bless you from wherever you're watching me from right now. Bless you in the name of God. Thanks for joining. <clears throat> Thanks for joining me. The Lord bless you. God is faithful and he's worthy. He's true. He's a true God. God is not fake at all. He's a true God. He's a true God. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God with me this afternoon. Worship God. Worship God. I want you to be happy wherever you're watching from. You just have to be happy and worship God in the beauty of His holiness. Worship Him. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a living God. He's not a dead God. He's coming again to pick the saints home. Jesus is true. He's real. There's no doubt about it. We are living testimonies that God is real. He's worthy. To be praised, to be worshipped, to be adored, to be referenced, to be honored, to be obeyed. God is real. He's real. He's real. Let's worship Him, please. Let's worship Him. If you're joining me, I want you to open up your heart and begin to worship God from wherever you're watching from. There's no one else like than Jesus. No one else like Him in our lives. No one else. I want you to think deeply. You will know that in truth... That there is no one else like God in your life. Honestly, there is no one else. No one else. No one can ever do what God has done for you. No one can give you life. No one can care for you. No one can be there for you. Like God, I am telling you the, the gospel truth. Nobody. He's only God. He's only God. Men cannot even do it when they want to. Sometimes men will not want to do but when God is with you, God will touch the heart of men to be with you, to support you, to encourage you, to like you, to do things for you. Not because you want them to do it or you will know. You get, what I'm, you, you get what I'm trying to say. So that is it. God is everything. God is everything. God is everything. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Let's appreciate God. Appreciate him. Open up your mouth. And begin to thank him for the gift of life, for bringing us here again. Thank him for yesterday's message. Thank him for as many that message has touched. Thank him for today's message because he's going to touch you again. Thank him. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He's a caring God. He's a God that can never forsake his children. No matter what, he's always there for us. He's always 
close to us than we ever think or imagine. I want you to please open your mouth and also ask God for mercy, for forgiveness of sin as we have gathered in His presence again to worship Him, to bless His name, to hear what He has for us today. May His name be praised in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody, please, I want you to ask God for mercy, for forgiveness. I want you to ask that the windows of heaven should be open unto us, that God should rain down His glory in our midst today, that our meeting here today will not be in vain. God will see us through. God will drop a word that will meet our needs in the name of Jesus. Only one word of God can change your life. I'm telling you, only one word of God can give you hope. Only one word of God can transform you. Only a word from the Master can heal that sickness. Only a word from the master can turn your situation around. Only a word from the master can give you strength. Maybe you're feeling weak right now, but a word of God can just come into your heart right now and liberate you and give you hope and tell you that you are more than a conqueror. You are more than what people say you are. You are more than where the situation of life is placing you at the moment because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If only you can believe that word of God and you will see it manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. I want us to <clears throat> I want us to welcome one another. I welcome you all in the name of Jesus. I also want to use this opportunity to remind us that you know in the presence of God, you know in a fellowship you hear a pastor say welcome your neighbor, welcome your friends, welcome them, welcome yet them because yes we are one family in the body of Christ. So when we gather here like this, I am your your your, your servant the Lord has sent to to you know to bless you with the word of God every day. We are brothers, we are sisters, we are brethren in the Lord. We are one in the family of the kingdom of God. We have to show one another one another love, care. So welcome your brother. I want us to you know appreciate sometimes you see people come on or come on the platform. They say good afternoon everybody, good morning everyone you know, they greet one another. So I want us to try to be responding. Let's be responding to greetings of our fellow brethren. Yes, let's respond to them. Let's show them love. Let's show them care. That is why we are here. I mean, if if that is not what you want, I don't think, uh, you know, you will be here. You won't be here. You are here because you love God. You are here because you want to fellowship with the fellowship of the brethren of Christ. You want to, you know, you want to mingle. You, you know, you want to join the fellowship of Christians, believers, followers of Christ. That's what we are here to do. Hallelujah. So as we are joining, welcome your neighbor. Tell somebody God will bless you today. Tell somebody as you're listening, whatever it is that is your heart desire, God will meet it up. God will show up for it. God will come into that situation and give you a testimony that will surprise you this year in the name of Jesus. I want you to just speak into somebody's life, speak hope, speak life, speak reassurance into somebody's life right now. Yes, there is power in our spoken words. As you begin to speak it, I see life coming upon somebody. I'm telling you in the mighty name of Jesus. I am just moving as the Lord has, is leading me. I'm not a woman of my own. I, 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 I submit myself to, to the use of Almighty God. Let Him do whatever He wants to do. Let every fellowship, let every coming together every day be by the leading of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to you know, show your brother love, show your sister love. Tell them you are there, you are here for them. The Lord is here with us to encourage each and every one of us with the word that we are about to hear today. Yes, because the word of God gives life, gives life, it gives us life. The entrance of the word gives life and, and, and gives understanding to the simple. How will it give understanding to the simple? It is the simplicity of our heart that will absorb in the word of God. As we allow the word of God in into our heart with simplicity, with an open heart, with you know, acceptance, with belief, you will see it begin to grow in your heart and begin to spring forth good fruit that you can ever think or imagine. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want you to be happy. Please be happy. Jesus loves you. I love you as well. Yes, Jesus loves you. He cares for you. That is why he's sending me your way again today to give you hope, to, to reassure you, to, to speak into your life, to bless you, to encourage you in this journey we are into. 
It is not easy. It is not an easy job. It is not an easy road. The narrow way is very tiny. The narrow way is a lonely road. The narrow way is a road that many don't want to follow. The narrow way is a, is a, is a way that, you know, a lot of things happen. Pain, sorrow, gossip, backbite, neglect. Yes, when you choose to follow the narrow way, you won't have many friends. When you choose to follow the narrow way, People can say anything about you. When you choose to follow the narrow way, you will be alone most times. Not that you're not going to be alone because I am not alone. Jesus is with me. And I have people who love what I do, who love me. Everybody can't hate Christ. Everybody can't hate through, you know, followers of Jesus. Yes, everybody can't hate you. Everybody can't hate the true gospel. I am telling you. But when you are with Christ... You are majority. The Bible says he that is with God is majority. It doesn't matter how many that are following the broad way. But when you choose to follow the narrow way, he that is in Christ is majority. Oh my God, I am telling you that you are the most happiest person on earth because you have made the right choice and you are following the right path. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please, I want you to do something for me. Just click the share button and share this message. Let it be a blessing to someone who will listen to this message afternoon, this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Click the share button. Invite your friends. Be a blessing to somebody. There are many ways we can be blessings to our neighbors. You can be a blessing to someone else by clicking the share button of this message to share and invite your friends. You never can tell who will listen to this message and be blessed and be encouraged. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. And let's invite, let's invite, let's invite, let's invite before we quickly go into what we have to discuss today. God is good. He has done us well. All our soul. Rise up and praise thy Lord. Lord is good, Lord is good. He has done us well, O oh my soul. Rise up and praise thy Lord. God is good, oh yes. He has done me well, O oh my soul. Rise up and praise thy Lord. God is good, God is good. He has done me well, O oh my soul. Rise up and praise the Lord. God is good, somebody. He has done me well, oh my soul. Rise up and praise the Lord. God is good, God is great. He has done us well, oh my soul. Rise up and praise the Lord. He has given you victory. You will lift him higher. He has given you victory. You will live to my I am singing for somebody I don't know who God is talking to. You know, God can speak to us through song, through the word, through prophecy, through however. So, God is speaking to somebody that God is good. He has done us well. Let our soul rise up and praise God. God has given you victory and you will lift him higher. I am telling you, he has given you victory. He has given you victory because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You have not seen it because you have faith. You have faith because God will do it. And God is speaking to you by the power of his word through song. And if you have faith, I see it coming forth. I am telling you. God has given you victory. You will live to my God has given you victory. You will live to my God has given you victory. You will lift him my God has given you victory. You will lift him my He has given me victory. I will lift him my He has given me victory. I will lift him my He has blessed my life. I will lift him my He has given us victory. Let us lift him my oh. Let us lift him my let us lift him higher. Mm -hmm. Let us lift my God higher, higher. Hey. Let's go lift him higher. He has given us victory. Let us lift him higher. He has given us victory. Let us lift him higher. If God has given you victory, lift him higher right there where you are. Just, 
in few minutes, just lift him higher because of that victory that he has given you. He has given you victory. You that is listening and watching right now. I said, God has given you victory. Take it or leave it. He has given you victory. Hey, oh my God. God has given you victory. Victory. Victory is yours. Victory is yours. Victory today is yours. Mm -hmm. You told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is yours, my God. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Mm -hmm. Victory today is mine. Mm -hmm. I have told Satan, Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. Oh, yes. Victory is mine. <laughs> Victory is mine. Victory today is my, my, my. I have told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory, victory is mine. Oh my God. Is victory yours today? Is victory yours today? Victory, victory all over us every day. Victory, victory. Mm -hmm. Victory, victory. Victory, victory is ours. Hallelujah. The victory of the Lord is ours because you are a child of God. You must continue to win the race, conquer the battles of life, and be a victorious person in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Today, by the grace of God, I want us to open our hearts and listen attentively to know what the word of God has for us today. And please run with it. Because we are in the perilous hour. The, the, the time that, you know, everything is showing that this is end time. <laughs> I keep saying this and I'll continue to say it. As a child of God, as a believer, as a follower of Jesus Christ. Anything or whatever that should be more important to us in this very last day should be to know God the more. It should be to seek God the more. It should be to love God the more. It should be to desire to be close to God the more. It should be to gather where anything that pertains to God is happening. We shouldn't be engaging ourselves in anything that is not of God so that we can be focused. I am telling you, that is the truth. For example, if a man is living, God has created us. We are, we are living beings created by God. And we are all living. We are all existing. We are all growing up. You know, we are developing. We are moving forward. We are excelling in whatever we are doing. We are giving our life time. We have time for studies. We have time for our children. We have time for our businesses. We have time for our, you know, uh, appointments with people. Very, very important. Some people have an appointment. They can't miss it. They, they will make sure they meet up with that appointment. They make sure they, you know, they, they, they meet up their, their, their flying time. Because if you have a, if you want to fly now with a, you know, a plane or whatever, you book your flight. You have to meet up that time. You have to make sure that you are at the airport so that you don't miss your flight. You want to cook, you go to market, you buy your ingredients, you're preparing towards the cooking. Because if you don't get your ingredients together, you can't cook. You can't cook your food. You have to get the ingredients together. Put them together and begin to cook. What are you doing? You're doing a preparation towards your, 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 your aimed goal. You're doing a preparation towards what you want to achieve. That is how it is. In our relationship with God. That is how it is when we say or profess that we are children of God. That is how it should be in our walk with God. For us to be alert, for us to be awake, for us to know what the time and the season is. In this end time, every man must always put his ears, put his eyes Put his mind, his attention on things that are godly. I'm telling you, that is the way. 
anything outside that you, you anything outside that you only be seeing or hearing distraction distraction discouragement weakness you know slumberness you won't be willing to move anymore you won't you won't be willing to go to church anymore you won't be willing to you know praise god anymore you won't be willing to serve god which is the proper agenda of the devil to do what to drag souls to hell by distracting them with things that are not necessary hallelujah and that is where i am bringing us to the topic of today by the grace of god the topic i've titled the essence of godly materials the essence of godly materials the essence of godly materials what is the essence of godly material what do i mean by material material are things that we know books godly tapes godly you know you know things that we want to have in our homes so that we can be focused on our godly you know um, journey with god if a man desire a thing and you want to achieve it you give it the best that's how it is in this race we are running this heavenly race you can't tell me you are a child of god you love god you 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 appreciate God, you want to make heaven, and you are engaging yourself in club, in pop, in disco party, in unnecessary things. You are engaging yourself in things that cannot help you grow. Somebody who wants to write exam, biology exam, who is reading Fix's book, when he gets to the biology exam, how will he pass it? Is a, I'm asking you, is a question. You are preparing for biology exam. Or you are a lawyer. You are preparing for your lawyer exam. Or your law exam, whatever. Instead of you to be reading law books. You are reading pharmacist book. You are reading theology book. You are reading a, an engineering book. You will fail your law school exam. That is it. Because all you will come there and be writing is law. Law of this, law of that. Law of that one, law of this one. Law of this, law of that. You can remember uh, 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 what you be writing is physics, I mean. Physics that, physics this, math that, biology that, theology that, theology that. You will know that it's law of this, law of that, law of this one. Because it's law, you are called to come and write. You are not called to come and write in physics, biology, math, English, and all that. That is how it is in our relationship with God. Every man or whoever says he, he or she is a child of God. I mean, <laughs> oh, people of God, let us know the truth. People of God, let us tell ourselves the truth. People of God, let us stop wasting our time. Let us choose and choose wisely. Let us begin to follow the truth. Let's begin to reject a unnecessary, you know, hypocrite in the house of God. Let's, let's begin to reject doctrines that are not of God. Teachings that are not godly. Any teaching that will not be focusing your mind. Oh, I miss old days. Oh, God. I miss old days. I miss the preachers of the old. I miss people of God. I miss brethren. I miss, I miss children of God of the old. In the olden days, when I was still small, in there, you know, in those days, I still know people. Ah, when you see a believer pass, you don't need to talk too much. When you see a child of God pass like this, hi, oh God, I will weep. I will feel the power of God. I will feel the. When I when I look at them, when I. They call them SUs. SUSU. They look different. When you see a child of God, you will know them. Forget they say people who, who, who look like that, they are deceiving themselves, they are doing that. Let me tell you, forget all those things. Forget. Let it be that they are deceiving themselves. And they, on, the, on the last day, them and God will, they will face it. Do what the scriptures say, do what is right. 
do what is right. Forget any anybody anywhere. Phone, the Bible says we should be imitators of what is right. Be ye imitators of good things. Not, not a, you know, a lazy man will always want an anchor of somebody. When he, a lazy man will always find an excuse. Once he see a fellow sister, a fellow brother that supports what he's doing. Mm. Hey, finish. No more talk anymore. That's when they will, energy will come. But when they see somebody who is doing the right thing, they hardly will imitate what is good. They won't imitate that one. They won't imitate it. Is that one that is not good? That is what everybody will be chasing after. Sister do like that. Brother do like that. Brother do this. Brother. Do. Why not follow that brother, that sister that is doing good? That you see that this thing is good do. And leave sisters, brothers that are deceiving themselves, faking things. They will face it on the last day. Let it not be a problem to you. Do what is right. And the Lord will honor you. What are we talking about? We are talking about the essence of godly materials in our homes. As a believer, as a child of God, we have godly materials in our homes. We have tapes. Look at them. Let me bring some. These are books. Anyway, my CDs, they are in the car. You know, um, a lot of things. I've got some, some CDs here. These are godly materials. You have godly materials. Christ, uh, the, Jesus films, all those things. You know, a lot of things. Books. They are godly materials. You bought them with your money. Why, as a child of God, you bought godly materials with your money? Why do we have them? Why? Why do we have godly materials in our homes? Why do we want to put things that are godly around us as Christians? We don't want to put things that are not godly in our homes, in our offices, in the company where we work. Why? Because we are representing somebody. Who are we representing? We are representing Christ. As a believer, you are representing God, Jesus. You are representing him here on earth. Because you have chosen to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And all the godly materials around you, you have them. Look, look at this one. An able woman in Christ. Heaven or hell. Make Jesus your friend. The Power of Prayer. All these books are written by Evangelist Lovely Nubi. I have other books here. Uncountable of them. In fact, plenty of books that I bought from other authors. Christian books. Look at them. In the shelf. Not only my books. This is only the four books that is published by me. Other books here are other authors. Other Christian authors that I like what they are doing. I buy them. I keep. Encourage me. Inspire me. Why? Because... There is something I'm pursuing. There is something I am aiming. There is something that is driving me to do it. Not because I have arrived. Not because I'm too righteous. Not because I'm too holy. But I am walking towards something. The way I was many years ago is not the way I am today. Why? Because I choose to do something. I choose to be different from who I was before. I choose to be no longer be the old Lovelin, but the new Lovelin now. Effort. Somebody say effort. Effort. As believers, as children of God, as followers of Christ, we have to make effort. We have to make effort to achieve our, our, our goals. We have to make effort to, you know, build our relationship with God. So the essence of godly materials, I'm going to be reading them out here from my, my notes. Hallelujah. One of them, I said, we have them at home. Our godly materials, we have them. We have them all around us here because we are reminding of, we are reminded of the fact that Christ died for our sins. 
and has saved us from those sins. You know, when you have a godly material in your house, you, 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 you occupy your house with godly materials. Why didn't you choose the, the, god, the ungodly ones? The anything, anything. It's because you are reminding yourself. You are reminding yourself. You are reminding your spirit. You are reminding your entire family. You are reminding yourself of the fact that Christ died for us on the cross and has taken all those sins, all those ungodly materials away from us. All those ungodly attitude, ungodly behavior, ungodly dressing, all those things, all those, uh, you know, all kinds of, you know, polluted themes, God has taken them away from us. You are enjoying those things when you don't know, when you don't have the knowledge of what you are doing. You are enjoying all those things because, you know, then that you don't know that those things are not good to have as believers, a follower of Christ in your house. But now that you have known, you should begin to eradicate them. You should begin to pick them off. You should begin to clean your house. Clean it. Remove anything that doesn't, that doesn't represent who you are. Remove them from your home. Whether anybody see it, whether anybody is not seeing you, watching you or not watching you. It doesn't matter who is watching you. It doesn't matter who is not watching you. Jesus is watching you. The eyes of God is more than the eyes of man. Yeah, to me, the eyes of man is not even important because God is everywhere. God is in my house here. I may come now and preach to you, tell you this, 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 blah, 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 blah. But in my house now, you come in, you watch around, you see, you see, you see. You are seeing all sorts, all kind, all kind. I'm deceiving myself. I'm deceiving myself. Hallelujah. So, that's why I'm telling you, focus and know what you are doing. Hallelujah. One of the essence of godly materials we keep in our house is because we want to keep reminding, of our, uh, reminding ourselves that Jesus died for us on the cross and has taken all those things away from us. He doesn't want us to have those things around us anymore. He doesn't want us to engage ourselves with anything, any material. Be it a uh, baby. Well, uh, what you, uh, there is one... Uh, uh, one this thing now that is that is raining, a full lady, a full man, they will mold it. Men can buy it and be sleeping with the 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 the, 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 the uh, puppy. Or what did they call it? What are they calling it? You know those of you know what I'm talking about. So all those things now, material materials like that, it's not godly. You have to pick them away, pick them off. Anything you know is not godly in your house as a child of God. Remove them. Remove them. All those things are idols before God. They are not something to keep around you as a child of God. Number two, the essence of godly materials in our homes is to keep our minds set and focus on the things of God. You know, number one I said is to remind us that Jesus died for us and has taken away our sins. So we have to take away anything that will be reminding us of sin around us. And number two, we now keep our mind on the things that are matter to God by bringing in things that will be improving your relationship with God, your, your work with God, you bring all those things. Three, is to also remind us we have no much time left for our preparation to meet with the Lord at the sound of the trumpet. Yes. Because as a child of God, you are walking towards something. You gave your life to Jesus because you want to see the Lord on the last day. You want to, you don't want to perish. So now you are you are you are you are you are reminding yourself daily that you have no time left. You don't have much time. Even looking at what is going on in the world of today, you yourself will see and know that we don't have much time in, in truth and in spirit. We don't have any much time anymore. The Bible prophecies are coming to pass fast, fast, fulfilling. The word of God is fulfilling. What is going on in the world of today is you know, bringing, fulfilling the word of God. 
making us to you know know and remind us that this is end time the time is near we don't have any much time to be wasting on things that are not relevant this message may look somehow or sound somehow to you maybe i'm not praying receive your healing now receive this one now receive that one now but this is the greatest gift i am giving you preparing you and reminding you of who you are in the lord and also reminding me because as i'm talking to you i'm also talking to myself i'm also talking to myself yes hallelujah I'm also talking to myself, not only you. Praise God. So, as I was saying, <clears throat> number four. Praise God. Philippians 2, 12 reminds us of how we can work out our salvation. How we can work out our salvation. We cannot work out our salvation without doing something. Work there means action. In Philippians 2 verse 12. say, walk at your salvation with fear and trembling. He said we should not be the, uh, that type that profess we love God, we love God with mouth. Without showing it in action. Walking at our salvation with fear and trembling. So we need to walk at our salvation. The walk there is action. Action. And what is, when something is action, it, reminds, it, it requires you to, to, you know, to act, to shake your body, to move, to do something that will enhance or promote your relationship and your journey or work with God. Hallelujah. As I'm talking, I'm still inviting people. Please join to be inviting. Hallelujah. And the Lord God will bless you in the name of Jesus as you share in the name of Jesus. So, number four, I said, the essence of godly materials in our, in our home is to help protect us from the danger of falling into sin. You see, when you have godly materials in your home, please, the case study of this message, the Bible reading, I mean, the Bible case study of this message is Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 19 to 20. Yes. Where the Bible is telling us to lay up our, our, our treasure in heaven. Laying up our treasures in heaven. We should stop laying up our treasures here on earth. Where thief, where uh, an uh, earthworm, everything will, thieves will break in and do what? Steal it. But we should lay up our treasures in heaven. How do we lay it? Is all these things I'm explaining here. That is how we can lay it. How we can lay it is by keeping godly things around us. We are laying the foundation. We are laying something. We are laying it. Because when you are buying ungodly things around you, ungodly music, ungodly music, ungodly things, anything ungodly, I may not know them all. It's not everything I know. There are something that is raining in the in the in the kingdom of in the worldly in the worldly kingdom now you know in a godly kingdom there is there, there are things that rain you know you see new songs released the same thing in the godly in the worldly kingdom you see them releasing all their worldly songs you know worldly worldly things that is raining in the world in the world right now i don't know them i don't know what is happening there because i'm not there i don't even want to know what is going on in the worldly kingdom right now it's not my business. What I want to know is what is happening in the kingdom of God. In the kingdom that I'm into. The kingdom of Jesus. I want to know any new any new release of any godly thing that will help me grow. That's what I'm concerned about. Anything that is not that should please find its way to wherever I want to go. Yes. That is, that is my own opinion and choice. It's choice. I've made that decision, no going back. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'm inviting you to, to take that stand in the Lord. And as you do, God will encourage you. God will help you. God will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. So, the essence of godly materials in our homes helps us to protect, helps to protect us from danger of falling into sin. Because when you surround yourself with things that you see, 
That is what you'll be seeing. <laughs> uh, the scripture said we should we should not you know hang around with a uh, ungodly. You say be not equally yoked with unbeliever. Be not equally yoked with anything that will be dragging you back. As a believer now, you are born again. You are walking your walk. You are growing gradually. How to grow more is to do things that will help you grow more. It's not to be risking things. A friend is telling you, let's go to this place. And you know that that thing is not is, is a godly place. So you are going. And you know that your faith is not is not strong enough to to you know to, to stand it. You know that you may you may you know fall into doing that thing. Don't go. Don't go. Remain where you are because you are walking towards something. The moment you go, you may there is chance that you may likely fall back to sin. Surround yourself with things that will help you grow. Surround your, your yourself around with friends, with families, with people that will make you do what grow. That is something Jesus told his disciples in the scripture. I think. I forgot in that particular scripture. He said, the Bible says he was in the midst of the crowd, and the his disciples was uh, you know calling him master, master. Here is your mother and your brothers and your sisters. And Jesus, the Bible says Jesus told them, he said, his family members, his brother, his sister, are these ones who will hear the word of God and do what and obey it. <laughs> oh my God. We are in a journey. We are in a journey that everybody have to choose what they want. I am telling you the fact too. Because on the last day, there is no nothing like brother. Is my brother, is my sister. Is same father, is same mother. Is my father, is my mother. You are my father, yes, good. You are my brother, yes, fine. You are my sister, yes, good. But the moment you are not doing that thing God wants you to do, that brother and sister will have limit. Yes, that friendship will have limit because it will look like I am disturbing you. I it will look like you are also disturbing me. Why? Because our kingdoms are different. I'm in the kingdom of God. You are still in the kingdom of the world and in the kingdom of darkness. I can't dance into you. I can't dance to your tune. I can't. You have to dance to my tune because. Dancing to the tune of Jesus is the best. Jesus is life. Jesus will give you life and give you eternal life. But dancing to the kingdom of darkness will end you in a, in a place you will ever regret. You will regret, oh, why, why did I end up here? You know, the way we are saying it now, it looks as if it is play, 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 until we get there. I've seen people who are in sick bed, who are seriously, look at, look, I got a call from a pastor friend in London two days ago and she was telling me that, you know, one of her pastor friend is in the hospital and I know that woman of God very well and, you know, a couple of times now I've been, I've been reminded, I said, oh, this woman of God, I haven't heard from her for a while now, you know, I was like, Sometimes, you know, she will come in my mind and say, oh, I don't know. Like that, I'll just pray, say, God, please, help everybody, protect everybody, oh God, strengthen everybody, wherever they are, give them the grace. I'll just speak word, I'll just talk, pray, pray. I never knew that that woman of God was in the hospital, you know, since December. This is January, now February, we're going to March. This three months, that woman of God had been in the hospital. And I was told that she cannot eat any more, no food, nothing. You know, that kind of a thing. And the woman of God that called me was telling me how the woman of God told her, you know, that in the midst of that her sick bed, that Jesus came to her and was telling her something. The part of the thing she shared with me is personal and related to her family. That is that thing we are talking about. Speak the word of God to your people. Tell people about Jesus. Tell your father. Tell your mother about Jesus. You don't know what your mother is doing in the background. You don't know what your brother is doing. You don't know what your father is doing. 
You don't know what they are doing. They are your parents, but you don't know what they are doing. Do not allow the sin of your parent to keep you in a tight corner. Try to pray yourself out. Try to break yourself out of, you know, the sin of father, the sin of mother, the sin of family. Thank you, God. So, you know, you are, you are a child of God. You, 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 you belong to God. You don't belong to, to the world anymore. You don't do things to please anybody. Because time will come, hey, when only you will be left alone. Like, she's in the hospital now, nobody was there. She's battling with life. She's, you know, a lot of things is going on. We are talking, we are seeing it now. Look at, hey, I'm still enjoying my life. I, I, you still have life to enjoy. Enjoy your life. Time will come where you will find that life. You won't see that life anymore. Life will be leaving you like this. You won't see life. It will not be between you and your God and your deed here on earth. I was so shocked. I was like, I said, God, please help her. Help this woman, Uncle Heal her. Not that she did anything wrong, but we need to be that we need to be careful. We believe we a child of God, you need to be careful. You need to be careful of your salvation so that what you don't know will not drag you to, 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 a, to a tight corner. I'm telling you the truth. Always pray. Pray for your parents. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Tell them about Jesus. If, he, if he they like, let them accept. If they, if they don't like, leave them. It will be recorded for you that you have said it. You have showed them the way of light. But they refuse. And God, heaven will, will, will use it against them on the last day. But when you don't say it, you see, Hmm. Don't forbid. Jesus told his disciples that my family, my friends, are these ones who hear the word of God and do it and obey it. He did not bother about father, mother, brother, anything. Why did Jesus do like that? But well, because he knew what he wanted. The will of his father is more important to him than the will of man, than pleasing anybody anywhere. That does not mean that Jesus did not like his family. That does not mean that Jesus hates his family, hates his parents, hates hate his mother, or his, his brothers and sisters that is looking for him. It's simply because he knew that what he's into is not a carnal thing. Serving God is not a carnal thing. It's a spiritual battle. It's a battle. It's a, in fact, it's a is 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 a is a battle that you must come to a point that you must choose to do what is right. Is a is a battle that cannot be compromised. No matter, I'm telling you the truth. Who oh, your God? Because if anything happen, family can deny you. Father can say this child is not my child; it is own. Mother can disown. Brother disown. Anybody disown. But Jesus can never. If you know what you are doing with God, He can never disown you. Even if you are left alone. Even if you are left alone. You are left alone. You are abandoned. Jesus can never forsake you. I remember in my life, a time I have no... I have friends now, plenty. You know when you are flexing with things of the world, you have a lot of them around you. Oh yeah, you talk that one. But once you begin to follow Christ, you see things begin to shift, you know, things will begin to, of course, two kingdoms are fighting. At some point in my life, nobody, when I tell you nobody, 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 devil will be using the people that you even least expect and be causing you pain. Causing you sorrow. Not that they hate you though. But devil is using them. But the Bible says, Woe unto that man that will allow himself to be used by the devil. Do you know what is woe? Woe is rot. Woe is cause. When cause of God, when God cause a man, he's serious. 
You see a family will be laughing you, telling you, I've, I've been told, uh, uh, I've been, I've been, I've been told like that before. By, by my sister, that, see you now, see you, you finish school, now Bible they carry. We know, say, we know, we know God is calling you, we know God is calling you, but why can't you walk? You have, you have graduated from school, you are not working, you have to walk so that you can help out in the family. Family need your help now. Oh, you, you did this and that, this and that. I was abusing me. Telling me, is this Bible that I will carry and die? Say, this Bible, where they carry? Now he, now, now he go carry, die. Now he, now he go carry, die. I say, man, you better man carry the Bible, die. Then say, I know, I know, carry and die. That is what we are talking. Choose what matters to you as a child of God. Do things at the right time. Don't waste time. Don't entangle yourself on anything that will drag you back. Surround yourself with godly materials, godly things. That is the only way you can escape. The kind, the kind, the kind music that is, that is singing in this generation with the people that are dancing it. You know, when music is singing, so dancers must be dancing it. So the, the kind band that is sing and band and dance that is going on now, for us to es escape it, we have to concentrate. We have to engage our mind. We have to engage our mind in the things that matters to God and to you. If what you choose is important to you. I'm not forcing you. If it's not important to you, you can remain where you are. But you have been told. Hallelujah. <laughs> the essence of godly materials in our homes, it gives you eternal joy. And the fact that you are not wasting money on the things that are not necessary. But rather, you are putting in your money on the things that are necessary. Why using your money to buy yourself problem? Why using your money to buy yourself sin? Buy yourself reproach? Buy yourself iniquity? Sin? <laughs> Spend your money on the things that are godly. On the things that will help you. That that person is doing it doesn't mean it's right. Oh, this thing is raining, you no. Know, doesn't mean you need it. That type of cloth is raining, you no. Know, doesn't mean you need it. That type of hairstyle is raining, you no. Know, doesn't mean you need it. That type of music, hey, there. That one is the, is the fact. That is the recent one. That is the recent one now. That is the song on board. Doesn't mean you need it. You go for what you need. Based on, based on how important is what you're trying to protect in your life. If you're trying to protect your salvation, I will not expect you to be squandering your money, your time, your energy on things that doesn't matter. If the God that you are serving and looking up, you know, looking up one day that, expecting one day that if you die, you are going to make heaven, you have to work towards it. You have to do things that will help your relationship matter and grow. And as you do, the Lord God Almighty will help you and help me as well in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Bible case study today is Matthew 6, 19 to 20. Matthew 6, 19 to 20. Jesus told us to lay up our treasures in heaven. He didn't say in the world, in godly things, in ungodly things, in night party. In carrying concubines, in dating men and dating women, in sleeping with all kinds, in stealing and lying, in bargaining evil bargain. He said, But lay up your treasures where, you know, anything will not spoil it. One day, you will be left alone. All those people that are deceiving you to sin to kill, to, to murder, to rob, to lie, to steal what is not your own, gang up, 
a lot of things, hypocrite, backbiting, stabbing people because of your selfish interest. They didn't do you anything. You hear somebody talk of somebody, you carry it, you begin to, to, to spread it. You don't even know the genesis of the talk. Because the person is your friend. You are trying to protect your friends. If hey, she's my friend, why would that person do her like that? This and that. You don't even know what that your friend even did. You don't know what she talked. You don't know what she said. Because she's your friend, you are protecting her. You are castigating you know, some person that didn't do you anything. You don't even know who she has carried to to, to you. You don't even know the person. You don't know. All those things are earthly effort lay your effort on godly things so that you know your reward is waiting for you and the lord will bless you in the name of jesus beloved that is the end of this message i am telling you that we have to be prayerful there are some points in our life that you will find lie like this you won't see lie lie will disappear found I was said it in Revelation now. <laughs> Say when the fullness of time will come. When the judgment of the Lord will take over. Say many will run to look for the word of God. Many will run to look for the... Hey! Bible, where are you? Bible will disappear. Church, where are you? Hey, which church? Church, 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 church will vanish. Some will run to trees, to run, to climb trees. Three will, three will not have place for them. Some will jump into the sea, to anywhere to hide. You can't no hiding place for the wicked on the last day. No hiding place. Some will now begin to find Jesus when Jesus has left with his with his saints, with the children of God. It's gonna be serious. Please. God is not condemning you. God is not fighting you. The Bible says, for this reason. The Son of Man died, that we may have life. For this reason, for this reason, God loves you. That's why He's telling you, reminding you, calling you to Himself, telling you, come out, come out, come out. A reminder that shows that He loves us. If a man, if a man, a woman, or a parent loves his children. No matter how the children, how bad the children are, the only obligation a parent owes his children is to correct them, teach them the way that is right. Teach them good things, things that will help them, not things that will make them, that will kill them, that will destroy them, but things that will keep them focusing. Whether they are footballers, whether they are engineers, whether they are bankers, whether anything, any, whatever. It's the duty of the parents to do what? To make sure that their eyes are focused on the, the right thing. Why? Because the parents don't want them to deviate from doing the right thing to doing the wrong thing. That is how it is between us and God. So now, tell me, how is a reminder of this kingdom not important to you and I? Now, tell me. It's very, very important. The reminder is very, very important. This is even when we need it most. In this time, this time of the world, hmm, see what is going on everywhere. And somebody is telling me, the hour is not near. We are living in, in the mercy. That is, this period is mercy period. Mercy period. Find your way in the Lord. Find your way. And the Lord will, will, will see you through. In the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, I've said it all. The essence of godly materials in our homes. That is the topic of today. The essence of godly materials in our homes. And our Bible reading is taken from Matthew chapter 6 from verse 19 to 20. Read them. Go through this message if you want to listen to it again. Share it with your friends and stay connected to God every time. That's only how we can keep connected to God, doing the right thing and heavily focus. Outside that, is nothing. 
I appreciate you all for joining me. May the Lord bless you, your time that you, you know, you're using to connect. May the Lord bless you. May God honor you. May God appreciate you. Your time is not is not waste. As you have spent your time with me today to listen to this message, the Lord will bless and honor you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please, I may not be calling names right now. I can see a lot of you on screen right now. Calling up names right now will take me time. It's already two now. I want to round up at two because I'm, I'm heading to somewhere right now. Please, God bless you. I appreciate your joining me, whoever you are. I can see all of you here. But time will not permit me to begin to call names one after another. You all matter to me and you all matter to God as well. God loves you. I love you as well. And may the Lord continue to bless and honor you and keep you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's keep watching. Let's be awake. Let's not be sleeping anymore. This is not sleeping time. This is time to begin to realize our mistakes. Nobody is perfect I am not perfect. I was not perfect before. I was a sinner as well. I was doing my own things. I was, you know, living my life the way I, I thought it is okay until Jesus began to teach me and tell me, do like this, do like that, obey, follow me, this, that. And I began to listen to him. I began to feel his presence. I began to love him the more. I began to have an encounter with this God. I'm telling you, every day I walk, I take my walk with him, I find more ha happy, happiness and uh, joy in this God. And that has kept me all this while. Even when I was left alone, nobody, Jesus was there for me. At some point, I feel like quitting. It's like that. When Jesus gave me the, top, the, top, the title of this book, Make Jesus Your Friend, Make Jesus your friend. A time in my life, nobody I was left alone. Nobody. What all sort was going on? All sort of all sort of things. I just feel like quitting. <laughs> I feel like quitting. I'm telling you, this thing happened in Ondo State, in a church that I engaged myself with. You know, I I found Christ there. I love God there, but. Some of the ships under uh, uh, wolves under sheep clothing, you know, there are wolves under sheep clothing. They are in the choir, they are in the prayer warrior team, they are in the ushering department, they are in the catering department, they are among the pastors, they are among the mothers of the church, fathers of the church, wolves in sheep clothing who are there for confusion. Nothing but confusion. They don't have anything to contribute to the progress of the church or the ministry they are into. But they are just there to discourage people that, that God is using to keep his, move, his, his kingdom uh, 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 moving. They are there to discourage. They are there to gossip. Talk, 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 talk. They have nothing to contribute. They are jealous of your gift. They are jealous of your anointing. They are jealous of you know, <laughs> I am not you, you are not me. What makes me me is in me. What your real you is in you. What makes you you is in you. You can't be me, I can't be you. That is the fact. That is the fact. God has given us different gifts, different blessings, different faces. My face is different from your own. Live your life, be happy. Appreciate people. Appreciate the gift of God in people's life. They jealous me. People in the choir, they jealous, those sort of things. They jealous me. Anointing of God upon your life can never be subdued. Nobody can press it down. It can take time. Destiny, it can be delayed, but can never be denied. Destiny, it can be delayed, but can never be denied. Destiny, it can be delayed. But can never be denied. Destiny, it can be delayed. Destiny, but can never be denied. Destiny, it can be delayed. But can never be denied. They may be delaying you, but they can never deny you. Hey! 
Yes, so it can never be denied. Destiny, it can be delayed. Destiny can be delayed, but can never be denied. They start gossiping me. Oh God, I don't want to go. Please, let's just end it here. That is where, at that point, one day, I, I, I in fact, I was so, I, I, in fact, I just feel like it's better I go back to the world and belong to where I am. Enjoy my life. Do things as I like. I don't care. When I was in, my, in the world, living life, who, nobody has come and tell me what, who, who, he, hey, I don't want to give you language so that you don't, <laughs> I'm telling you. But, one day, Jesus spoke that word. Be my friend. Make me your friend. Make me your friend. That was how the title of this book came. Make Jesus your friend. I said, ah, Jesus. And I began to, you know, think. I find peace. One thing I like about God is that when you love God from your heart and you are serving him sincerely, he's seeing you, he's watching you. Do not worry about anybody. Whether anybody is seeing you, he's not seeing you, he's watching you, he's not watching you, he's recommending you, he's praising you, he's not praying. Forget all those things, it's not important. You are, you are serving God because of God. Jesus will always be there for you. Your pastor cannot see you to appreciate what you are doing. Whether you are the best usher, or the best uh, uh, cook, or the best anything. Your fellow members cannot even see Jesus is the one that sees heart. He knows who is who among thousands of congregation. Anytime you are weak, he's there for you. That is how he did it in my life. He will come and tell me, my daughter, forget. Forget. He will speak one word. He can come in the dream. Can call, I can hear the voice. I can feel it. I can sense it. Peace will just come. And I will be courageous again. And I will be moving. Make Jesus your friend. And I jot it down. Make Jesus your friend. And I began to. The thought came. To put it in writing. I started writing it with higher education. That my higher education is in Nigeria now. Thought, thought, thought will come and put it down. Thought will come and put it down. I don't even have money to publish book. That I don't even have nothing. But I was putting it down. Putting it down. But today now, this is the book. Make Jesus your friend. I made him my friend. My life was never the same. Why? Because I choose what I want. I choose Christ. I choose things that pertains to Christ. And my life is not lovely enough. 15 years ago, 10 years ago, like that. I'm not a new person in the Lord. Even I'm still standing. Not that I have arrived. Not that I have arrived heaven. I have not arrived. I'm still making progress. Walking, walking on my salvation. Because you never can know what can be a hindrance to your, to your meeting with the Lord on the last day when the trumpet will sound. We, that's why we need to pay attention. Pay rough attention to what is, you know, needed of us at every given time of this present hour so that we will know when to do, what to do, and when not to do it. We, you know, we'll be courageous. We'll try our best. It's not easy, but God will be helping you. The moment you believe and begin to surround yourself with godly materials, Holy materials that will help you, you will never be put to shame. In the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you for joining me. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your, your, your courage. I appreciate your, your support. For those of you that are sharing the message, commenting, you know, helping to spread the gospel, may the Lord bless all of you, promote you, and advertise you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Those of you that are still bringing in your, your prayer request, please continue to bring your prayer request and continue to bring in your, your, your testimonies. 
I've been able to share too. You know, I have a lot of them, but because of time, you know, I'm a very busy person. Because of time, I've not been able to share more, but I'll be sharing. I will keep bringing by the grace of God. You know, it's not easy as well too. You copy it, you copy, 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 delete, delete, delete their faces, their name, all those things. Uh -huh. I'll be doing them small, small by the grace of God. Or maybe I can just uh, um, take off one week off on Facebook so that I'm, I'll just use one week to maybe make sure I, sh I clear all those testimonies out. Let me bring them out. You know, like I share those ones because I know it will encourage us. It will encourage one or two persons out there. It will encourage you to, you know, trust God and uh, hope in God. If God can do it for this person, God can still do it for you. That is the work of God. And that is the work of testimony, encouraging the, you know, the expectants in the Lord. And as we obey, may the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Please, I want to use this opportunity to please, I want to encourage you. I'm not forcing you. I'm encouraging you to please support our mission house building project in Lagos, Nigeria. Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus. That building right now is at the roofing level. We have been able to take it to the roofing level. Yes. We have been able to take it to the roofing level. You know, some things have been done there. We have, you know, we have dug borehole there. The borehole is dug. The, you know, um, suck away is in progress. We are doing some other things, filling and all that. So... All the necessary things we need in the building is going on by the grace of God. We need your support for the roofing, the roofing, the roofing. I've never demanded for money or for help in, in, in from anybody like this since I've been in the ministry. It's not a joke. I'm not saying it. I'm proud to say it. Even here in the UK, my ministry here, I don't talk of money when there is no need for it. I only mention donation or support when there is need for it in the house of God. That's when I talk of money. Anything outside that, we just come, we hear the word of God, we share the word of God, we praise God, pray, healing take place, deliverance take place, you know, people share testimonies and all that. And we take our one-off offering and that is it. Everybody will be happy and go home. If there is need to support that project, please, I am begging you in the name of God, if God is touching your heart to support that roofing of that mission house, please kindly inbox me. Inbox me and I will direct you how you can support. Bring in your support. No amount is too big. Whether you are here in the UK or you are in America, in any country or Nigeria, there, whatever it is you can use to support. 100,000, 50, 30, 20, 500, 1 million, however God is leading in your heart, please support. Because the quotes we are having, we are getting in the for the roofing is very high. It's millions, it's very high. The skeleton, the skeleton of the building, the skeleton and the roofing itself in, in, is, is high. So we cannot be able to handle it all at the moment. So that's why we are calling for the help of you know, you, my followers on social media and every other person, wherever you're watching from, please be part of this uh, 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 project. Be part of it. And the Lord will bless you for doing so in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much for listening to this message and uh, obeying it. And with the support, you will also support us. Thank you so much. I love you all with the love of God. Until I come your way again tomorrow by the grace of God. And if you want to know more about our ministry, you can just go to our website on www.cbhim.org. You can also visit our page, Christ the Beauty of Holiness International Ministry. Like our page, share the page with your friends, invite your friends to like the page. That is only how we can help to grow a platform where we belong to. If you belong to you know, this platform here on social media, you have to be part of the family. You have to help to grow the work of God. You have to help to share the page. Invite your friends to like the page. Share the ministration. Don't be ashamed to share ministration. People are not ashamed to share nakedness of women. 
women who are naked, people who are having sex with dogs, all kind of things, all kinds of things they share. They are not ashamed. So why do we, you know, you as believers, why would you be ashamed to share a message that you know will transform somebody's life? Let us, let us support the work of God and God will help us. Those of you that have been sharing and commenting, thumb up for you. God will bless you. God will encourage you. God will never put you to shame. In the name of Jesus, I pray that everybody be lifted up in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that as you are supporting, sowing seeds, you know, supporting, praying for this ministry and praying for myself, heaven will have you in mind. Heaven will meet you at a point of your need. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are blessed. You are blessed. May the Lord honor you. Thank you so, so much. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. God bless you, beloved. We'll catch up tomorrow by the grace of God. Remain blessed and focus your mind on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bye for now. Amen.